Hey OT dudes and dudettes, in this video we'll be talking about psychosocial pharmacology. There's a lot of information to cover so let's get right to it and let's get functional. Medications for depression. We'll start with SSRIs. SSRIs stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors and are the most commonly prescribed antidepressants. Doctors often start by prescribing these SSRIs, and they can help with symptoms of moderate to severe depression. Compared to other classes of medications, SSRIs are considered to be generally more safe. Let's go over the pharmacology of SSRIs. SSRIs increase the levels of serotonin in the brain by blocking the reuptake in your brain. Serotonin is the key hormone that stabilizes our mood, feelings of well-being and happiness. SSRIs may also treat anxiety disorders as well. Common medications that are approved include Prozac, Zoloft, Paxil, Celexa, and Lexapro. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, drowsiness, dry mouth, insomnia, nervousness, dizziness, sexual dysfunction, weight loss or weight gain, and other safety concerns such as for Celexa include arrhythmias in high doses, drug interactions, serotonin syndrome is when high levels of serotonin accumulate, often due to another medication. Signs and symptoms include anxiety, agitation, fever, diaphoresis or sweating, confusion, tremors, discoordination, changes in blood pressure, and tachycardia. Possible risks for pregnancy and breastfeeding also exist. There's also a black box warning, which basically states that there is possible suicide ideation for those under age 25. Let's talk about SNRIs. SNRIs stand for serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. They are a class of antidepressants that also help to relieve depression symptoms. SNRIs have also been used for anxiety and chronic nerve pain. Let's go over the pharmacology of SNRIs. SNRIs block the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain. The changes in brain chemistry help to regulate mood and relieve symptoms of depression. Common medications include Prestique, Cymbalta, Effexor, and Fetzima. Side effects are very similar to SSRIs, include nausea, dry mouth, dizziness, headache, diaphoresis or sweating, fatigue, constipation, insomnia, sexual dysfunction, and loss of appetite. Let's go over now some of the safety concerns. It may cause hypertension, may worsen liver problems. There are drug interactions when combined with certain medications such as herbal products that may increase the risk of bleeding. There is serotonin syndrome, possible risk for pregnancy and breastfeeding. The black box warning, which is the increased suicide ideation for those under age 25. And the black box basically exists for all of these antidepressants that we'll talk about. Atypical antidepressants. Atypical, like the word and how it sounds, are less common and they're considered another class of antidepressants. They also do not fit into the classes of SSRI or SNRI. Atypical antidepressants also work differently from one another um, to help manage depression. Let's go over the pharmacology. Just like other classes of antidepressants that we talked about, atypicals alter levels of neurotransmitter in the brain to help regulate mood and relieve symptoms of depression. Atypical antidepressants may change levels of dopamine, serotonin, or norepinephrine. Common medications include Welbutrin, Remeron, Trazodone, Cerazone, Vibrid, Trintelix, and a newer one which is a nasal spray called Spravato. Side effects are very similar to the ones we talked about earlier, they include nausea, dry mouth, dizziness, lightheadedness, drowsiness or insomnia, constipation, diarrhea, changes in appetite, and sexual dysfunction. Let's go over some safety concerns with the atypicals. They should not be used for those with seizures or an eating disorder. It may increase cholesterol, weight gain, there is related liver failure, and priapism, which is the permanent and a painful erection, arrhythmias, increased bleeding, drowsiness, such as with driving, and drug interactions when combined with other medications, such as herbal products, that may increase the risk of bleeding. 
There's also the serotonin syndrome again, the risk for pregnancy and breastfeeding in which you should consult with a doctor, and the black box warning that we mentioned earlier. Now let's talk about tricyclic antidepressants. Tricyclics are the most well known, but they're also tetracyclics, which mean four ring, and they're a class of antidepressants called cyclic antidepressants. Although they are effective, they are less commonly used than the other ones mentioned earlier. They may be a good option if the other options are ineffective. Let's go over the pharmacology. Cyclic antidepressants block the reabsorption of serotonin and norepinephrine to increase the levels in the brain. It has also been used, by the way, to treat OCD, anxiety, and nerve pain. Let's go over the common medications for cyclics. There are, I'm going to probably mess up a lot of these names, hemitriptyline, amoxapine, norpramine, doxapin, tofranil, pamelor, protriptyline, and trimipramine. Side effects include drowsiness, blurred vision, constipation, dry mouth, a drop in blood pressure when moving from sitting to standing, which can cause lightheadedness, urine retention, weight loss, increased appetite leading to weight gain, excessive sweating, tremors, sexual problems, and other safety concerns. Let's go over these. There's confusion, irregular heart rate, seizures, drug interactions, serotonin syndrome, complications with chronic health conditions, possible risk for pregnancy and breastfeeding, and the black box warning. So these basically are a little bit more serious than the ones that we mentioned even earlier. Let's go over monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAOIs, sometimes called MAOs. MAOs were the first class of antidepressants that were developed. So they have more side effects than the other classes of antidepressants that we mentioned. Being on MAOIs requires diet restrictions and an awareness of other side effects with other medications due to the basically potential for a very high blood pressure to build up. So let's go over the pharmacology. MAOIs prevent the enzyme monoamine oxidase from removing the neurotransmitters norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine from the brain. It may also affect other neurotransmitters and also the digestive tract system as a side effect. MAOIs are generally not prescribed for children. It has also been used, interestingly, for Parkinson's disease. Let's go over the common medications. Marplan, Nardil, MSAM, Parnate, and a skin patch version called Selegiline. Side effects include dry mouth, nausea, diarrhea or constipation, headache, drowsiness, insomnia, dizziness, or lightheadedness, a skin reaction if you're using the patch, involuntary muscle jerks, low blood pressure, reduced sexual desire or difficulty reaching orgasm, weight gain, and difficulty starting a urine flow, there's also muscle cramps, prickling or tingling sensation on the skin or paresthesia, safety and dietary restrictions, possible risk for pregnancy, and of course, the black box warning. So what foods or diet should you be on and what things you should avoid? These include aged cheeses, sauerkraut, cured meats, draft beer, and fermented soy products such as soy sauce or tofu. There are possible interactions with other drugs too, such as other antidepressants, pain relieving drugs, allergy medications, herbal supplements, and things like that too. So be careful of that. There's also the black box warning as well. Last, we're gonna go over other medications. Doctors may combine two antidepressants or combine an antidepressant with another medication to enhance the antidepressant effect. The same side effects would generally apply and probably even more because you're using two uh, or more. So consider that as well for the safety. That pretty much sums up the overall picture of these psychosocial medications. There's of course many more, but these are the most common ones. I recommend maybe putting these down on a flashcard or finding another way to memorize these and basically regurgitate the information. You probably heard of some of these names before, so you don't have to memorize all of them, but one to definitely pay attention to are the MAOs and the dietary restrictions and the side effects and knowing basically what's more serious and what's less serious in terms of side effects and what's more commonly prescribed and what's less prominent, what's commonly described. I hope this video helps. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.